So if I've got, that's just straightforward, a to the 9 as a 9 to the power of 6. Yep, so it's going to be a to the 54. 6 nines or 54, straightforward. a to the 11, not very good 11. a to the 11 multiplied by 8, not to the power of 8. a to the 8, 8. Okay, we're just multiplying these two numbers, nice and straightforward. a to the minus 4, the power of minus 6. a to the 24. Minus 4 times minus 6, 2 negatives make a positive. 4 and 6, 24. Good stuff. Now let's do. So let's do the same again, but let's add in another number. So let's add in our integers. So say we say we've got 3x to the 4 squared. So we have to do 3 squared. That's going to give us 9. And then x to the 4 squared, 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so we're squaring this and this. You can think on it that we're doing 3 squared and then x to the 4 squared. Okay, that squared applies to both those numbers. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, another example like that. So say we've got 10 x cubed. Cubed. Okay, so 10 cubed is 10 times 10 times 10. So that's going to give us 1,000. And then x cubed cubed is 3 times 3, which is going to give us 9. Okay, 3 times 3 is 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. Nice and straightforward. Okay. I suppose the danger here is that people might do 3 times 3 times 3 out of cubing with 10 here. But no, you're doing 10 cubed. And because of the power laws, you're going to multiply these two numbers. Okay, so this does get cubed, but this is multiplying just 3 times 3. Okay, uh, let's do one more. Let's see, we've got let's get one minus two x to the four to the power of six. So minus two to the power of six. We're going to times that by x four to the power of six. So this is dead easy. We just multiply them. So we know we're going to get x to the twenty-four. But this just requires a little bit of work. So minus two times minus two times minus 2, times minus 2, so that's squared cubed 4, times 5, I'll just put 1 over that side. So that's squared cubed 4, 5, 6, okay. So minus 2 times minus 2, it's going to give us 4, times minus 2, minus 8, times minus 2, give us 16, times minus 2, minus 32, times minus 2, give us positive 64, okay. You see what I did there? Minus 2 times minus 2, and each time we're changing from negative to positive, and each time we're just times in by 2. Okay, so final answer there would be 64x to the 24. Stuff. Okay, uh, the last uh, couple of examples. Um, I'd just like to remind us um, of the power of zero rule, okay, which I just touched on at the beginning. So, why? The power of zero is equal to one. Okay, x to the power of zero equal to one. Eight to the power of zero one. Okay, anything to the power of zero is equal to zero except zero to the power of zero, which is actually undefined. Okay, but you shouldn't get that. Okay, anything to the power of zero is going to be one, and like we said. Just think on it, if you do x squared divided by x squared, 2 minus 2 is 0, so that's x to the 0, and that's 1. And it makes sense. Something divided by itself gives you 1. Okay, 1 divided by 1 is 1. 
2 divided by 2 is 1, okay? So it's the same thing here. The power of 0 gives you 1. So if I say 2 to the power of 5 to the power of 0, it's just going to give us 1. Okay, you can work all that out if you want, but it's just going to give us 1. Okay? So, anything to the power of 0 is 1. The other rule, which we touched on last time, was the fraction rule. Okay? So, let's write pen gun. X to the minus k is equal to 1 over x to the k. Okay? k to the minus 1 is going to be equal to 1 over k to the 1. Okay? Which is just 1 over k. 1 to the minus 5 1 over 5. Okay? Nice and straightforward. The only tricky ones here are if you are given it the other way around. So say you're given 1 over, if you're given 1 over x cubed, you know that's going to be x to the minus 3. Okay? But what if you're given 1 over x to the minus 3? Well, that's just x to the 3. Now, if you think about it, that 1 over x to the minus 3 is 1 divided by 1 over x to the 3. Okay? So 1 divided by 1 over x to the 3, we could rewrite that as 1 divided by 1 over x to the 3. And then when we're dividing fractions, we know we do our KFC. So we keep this the same. We flip this and we change that sign. KFC. So 1, keep. Then we do the flip. That gives us x cubed divided by 1. And then change that to multiply. So 1 and 1 cancels out. And we're left with x cubed. Okay, so if you see a minus in there, just remember, this is the exact same rule we're doing, okay? Basically, you're just changing that sign and moving it, okay? So here, make it positive, put it below the 1. Here, make it positive, put it above the 1, okay? So that's, you can derive it that way if you forget, okay? Um, and let's just do a slightly trickier one. So let's say we've got x to the, what to do? x to the 6 divided by x to the 4 to the power of minus 2. That's quite tricky. What does that give us? Okay, so our first rule, 6 minus 4 is going to give us 2. So that's x to the 2 to the minus 2. And now because that's a power, we're going to multiply. So that's going to give us x to the minus 4, which is just the same. Is 1 over x to the 4. I'll maybe be right that because that looks like a tree or something. x to the 4. Okay, that's a good example. If you can get that, that's putting quite a lot of it together. Okay, and the very last thing to go over is the fraction work that I talked about. Okay, so if I said to you, rewrite this equation. Let's say we've got x cubed root squared. So that's just x, 2 stays the same, and the 3 goes below. Okay? Nice one. If we've got the square root of x cubed, that's going to give us 3 stays the same, and that's divided by 2. This has always got a 2. We don't usually show it unless it's a higher power. Okay? If we've got the cube root of a to the 8, yep, it's just a to the 8 divided by 3. Okay, nice and straightforward. Now, sometimes on the non calculator paper, you get these in number form. Okay, so they'll give you something like 64 to the power of a third, which sounds quite difficult, but really, that is just the cube root of 64. So what's that going to be? Well, 8 times 8 gives us 64. So it can't be 8. So what about 4, maybe? So 4 times 4 is 16. Times by 4, 64, yeah. So that's going to give us 4. So if you don't know what the number is, just do a bit of trial and error, okay? So 4 times 4 would be 16. Times by 4 is 64. 40, yeah, exactly. So 
just doing a trial and error. Let's do this is a fun one. 125 to the power of two over three. Okay. So we can rewrite that as a cube root of 125 squared. So what's the cube root of 125? Well, C5 solves like five. What's five times five times five as a starter? 25, yep, that's the 125. Now again, if you didn't know this, just try a few numbers. Numbers get big very quickly. So it's gonna be something quite small between probably zero and 10. So just try four times four times four, five times and see what you get, okay? So yep, we know it's 125. Uh, sorry, the cube root of that is five. And then we know that five squared, is 25. Nice and straightforward. Okay. These look quite tricky, but there's really not, not a huge amount in them actually. But they do they do catch people out in their own calculator paper. Um 16 to the power of 3 over 4. So that's the fourth root of 16. Good. So again, what times what times what times what gives us 16? I'll start with 2. It's probably not a bad show. So 4, 8, yeah, 16. Okay, so we know that the fourth root of 16 is 2. And then we're going to do 2 cubed, which is just 2 times 2 times 2. And that's going to give us 8. Dead straightforward. So the thing to remember is that this number here is moving around to give us this. Okay, and we do that part first, and then we do the top fraction. Dead straightforward. If we get, let's see... Let's see, we get k squared to the fourth root. That could be rewritten as k to the two or four, which is the same as k to the half, which is the same as the square root of k. Okay. So again, these little manipulations, just playing about with the numbers. But it all starts with knowing what your rules are. Okay, so the four goes here, two over four, simplify by two over to a half. And then we know we can put that around there. Okay. So if someone gave you this question and it had a and it was nine, you know, it was a square, it was the fourth root of nine squared. Suddenly you're thinking, oh, that's quite tricky. But you could move the four round and say, well, nine to the two over four. Oh, that's nine to the half. Oh, so it's the square root of nine. So it's just three. Okay. So uh yeah. Just there, that's a quite a straightforward rule, but it does seem to Confuse people because it looks quite quite tricky, I think. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, that's most of the rules.